Now, let me ask, how many of you have studied a new language, not the language you grew up speaking? All right, okay. Well, today we're going to look at second language acquisition. That is, learning a second language. And one question that linguists like myself have tried to answer for many years is, why is it considerably easier for kids to learn a second language than adults? And we're going to look at a few different theories about this. First, we'll look at a theory that says there's a critical period or phase or ideal time in life for language learning. And then we'll talk about other factors such as the learning environment, attitude, and motivation. Now, from the show of hands, I see that many of you have had your own personal experience with language learning, and I have recently too. I started studying Mandarin Chinese, Putonghua, just last year. And uh, so I've been going to class, you know, listening to language CDs, and I'm learning, but it's tough. It's tough to learn a new language. And then today, I went into my son's class, and he's in first grade now, and one of my son's friends, Ji Wei, he goes by Stephen now, he just moved here last fall from China. And when he first came into the class, he didn't speak a word of English. I mean, not one word. But now he's talking away in English, not always perfectly, but very easily, very fluent. And I'm like, wow, I mean, this is so unfair. We've both been studying a new language for the same amount of time, but he's learning it so much more quickly. And this is, in fact, something that linguists are very interested in, understanding this difference between how kids and adults learn a new language. Now, one explanation is that there's a critical period for language learning. And this theory was first introduced in the 1960s by a linguist named Eric Lenneberg. And Lenneberg's theory says that during childhood, language learning is very easy. Basically, our brains are just ready for language learning. But later, starting in adolescence and as we get older, our brains change. We lose this childhood ability, and it becomes more difficult to learn language. Now, that's why adults have trouble learning a new language. Well, and if you're an adult, that's a bit discouraging, right? You can look at my son's friend Stephen, who is six years old, and me, who's 29 plus, and say, well, OK, Stephen is still in the critical phase. His brain works perfectly right now for language learning. But you, you're way past the critical phase, and your brain's already changed. So too bad. I'm sorry. But wait a minute. Is this comparison between me and Stephen really fair? I mean, there's an age difference, but there are a lot of other differences as well. Can we really say that my lack of progress learning Chinese is only because I've passed the critical phase? No, no. no. Many people, including linguist Robert de Kaiser, would say, no, you have to look at other factors. Okay. Now, one obvious factor in second language acquisition is environment the place where the person is learning. So Stephen is here in an all-English environment where he's speaking English all day at school, and all of his friends speak English. Me, on the other hand, I'm just taking a class two hours a week. So sure, I listen to my Chinese CDs in my car on the way to work, but other than that, I'm not in an environment where I hear a lot of Chinese. And I wonder, what if it were the other way around? What if I went to China and was in school all day hearing Chinese, and Stephen was studying English only two hours a week? Do you think that would change how well we were each learning the language? Yeah, I'm sure it would. So environment plays a significant role in language acquisition. Another factor in second language acquisition is a person's attitude about learning the new language. How do you feel about learning? Now, when I was watching Stephen in the classroom playing with his friends, it was clear he didn't feel at all embarrassed about his English language abilities. You know, he can't speak perfectly yet, but when he made a mistake, he didn't care. 
Neither did his friends. They just kept on playing. Me, on the other hand, I find it very difficult to speak Chinese, but I'm not sure what I'm saying. I get very nervous and embarrassed. And as a result, I don't practice speaking as much as I should. So clearly, a person's attitude about learning is very important in acquiring a second language. Now, finally, the last factor we'll look at is motivation. Okay, why is the person learning the language? Now, Stephen is probably very motivated to learn English. All his friends speak it, so he needs to learn it in order to play with them. I, on the other hand, want to learn Chinese, but I don't need to. So we are both motivated to learn, but perhaps my motivation isn't quite as strong. All right, so what do we understand about second language acquisition? Well, there does seem to be a critical period in childhood when language learning is much easier. But it's important to look at all the factors, and there are several, including environment, attitude, and motivation, which help decide if someone is going to be a successful language learner. As for me, I'm not ready to give up on Chinese just yet.